Hello and welcome once again to another edition of Carp Escape. Now you may or may not be wondering why I'm sat on my sofa in my living room instead of being out on the bank like I usually am when I'm filming these. The reason being is this video is going to be a little bit different to what I've done before in the sense of I'm going to cover my whole autumn uh, season of fishing um, and it was a very busy season in terms of I went to quite a few different venues, um, mainly short sessions, uh, a bit here, there and everywhere and I've done a bit of filming at all of them um, but didn't feel that any of them individually warranted their own individual video. Um, so the reason behind this is I'm kind of going to piece them all together and keep flitting between myself narrating to you from here and back and forth to the, to the videos of the different sessions. So with that in mind, I'm not going to waffle any longer, we're going to cut to the first session and uh, which is a social that me and a friend of mine went on to a beautiful little lake uh, just outside the town of Dis in Norfolk called Darrow Farm Fisheries. We were there for 48 hours, we didn't know much about the lake, um, all we knew is that it had a beautiful stock of fish, some big scaly ones, quite a young lake, it's only been open two years, um, but the fish there were absolutely beautiful and we spotted an opportunity so we thought let's go and give it a go. So without further ado, let's see how we got on. Hello and welcome once again to another edition of Carp Escape. So for this episode you join me down at Darrow Farm Fisheries uh, just outside of Dis in Norfolk. Um, I've never been to the lake before, um, I've, I've not really heard much about it. Um, I'm actually down here for a social with a friend of mine, again who I've actually never fished with neither. So it's been quite a good little trip hopefully, two different anglers, two different styles, um, fishing a lake that neither of us have ever fished before. Um, but what I do know about it from what I've seen on Facebook and on the, on the internet, it's a beautiful little lake three and a half acres nine swims really well maintained swims as well they're really beautiful nice stoned uh nice wood outline um you know they're never gonna get muddy never gonna get bogged under water they're, they're they're really well thought out and really well presented the fish are absolutely absolutely stunning and i mean stunning big scaly mirrors i think there's some some vs fisheries in here there's some leany strain in here uh, there's a couple of others as well but i can't remember for life what they are but they are absolutely beautiful so if we can get in amongst one or two of them they're going to be absolute pearlers for us to show you so fingers crossed we can get amongst them but anyway i'm not going to catch them standing near am i so less waffle more fishing i need to get my gear sorted get around to the swim and get some rods in the water i'll catch you in a little bit Right, well we're here, we're in the swim, we're all sorted, rods are all out, um, found some really nice little spots, I've got one rod just down to my left hand side in the margin, about a rod length off, it's only about three and a half foot of water, so we'll give that a go. Two rods out in open water, I've got one just off the island, about half a rod length off, real nice hard silty area, and then my right hand rod is sort of two thirds of the way in between me and the island, it's basically a really big gravel bar that runs right in front of my side of the swim, and I've literally found where it finishes and i'm probably i reckon three foot into the silt on the right hand side before that bar starts again nice hard silt uh, about five five and a half foot pretty much the same as the rod out near um the island as well it seems pretty uniform really to be honest apart from this close in margin down to my left so yeah rods are out put about five spawnfuls of bait over it same as usual mixture of 18 uh, sorry 15 and 20 mil apex formula boilies heavily glugged and uh, sprinkled with a load of uh, powdered up boilies over the top of that as well just to give them a nice ooze nice loads of attraction really um but yeah so the rods are out bit of bait out kettles on Nearly dinner time, everything is all good with the world. Fingers crossed we get something tonight. Right, well, it's early morning now. Um, bite time's pretty much been and gone for, for this morning now. Um, quiet night, nothing to report. I'm pretty sure the guy opposite me had a run. Whether we landed on, I don't know. I never saw any camera flashes, but definitely heard the run and saw a load of head torches all, all on for a little while. Pretty sure one of the lads down to my left as well had a run. Um, 
but again didn't see any camera flashes after but there's definitely definitely a couple of runs throughout the night last night heard a couple of fish crash um, down to my left hand side so not far off my margin rod but that didn't go um, that's about it really um, right hand rod had loads of liners all throughout the night loads and loads and loads of lines um, the only thing I can think of that being is it's only fished eight wraps out um, I'm not fishing a completely tight line but what I did do with that rod because of only been eight wraps out I actually baited it with a catapult rather than a spawn and I think probably the spread of bait from that the catapults created is to put a bait on top and around my line coming back towards me so potentially I don't know if that's fish feeding on the area and have been knocking the line from where the bait is too close to it so I think today I'm going to spawn that rod as well as the other two um, just to try and see if that prevents it but we'll wait and see we've still got 24 hours just over to go um, but yeah so far all blank for both of us we're both doing different tactics I've got two rods on two different types of snowmen uh, one on the wafter uh, and my mate's got uh, one pop up two wafters two different flavor wafters on um, so yeah we're just going to stick with it today reel the rods in shortly freshen them all up get them back out again put a bit more bait out and wait and see what happens today apparently one of the guys from sort of opposite the other side of the island he had two yesterday afternoon before we got here at three o'clock so yeah there's definitely a chance so uh yeah we'll just keep keep plugging along and then see if we can make it happen see how it goes First fish of the session, it's fallen to myself on a single match the hatch bait, um, banana and nut mix, I believe, from Impulse Baits, cast out to the middle of the two islands. Here she is, the other side, 23 pound, 12 ounces. Right, well, good morning. Uh, nothing to report from last night. All pretty quiet, really. Uh, a few liners here and there, not as many as the night before, but sadly no fish. So we're still on just the one. Uh, I might add yesterday afternoon, that, that beautiful 22 pounder. So yeah, just the one, but I don't know how well you can see it or not from behind me, but this morning, I mean, it's been raining for like the past two and a half, three hours, really. Um, it was really misty, overcast, damp real carpy this morning so um, we haven't got to be off well technically we haven't got to be off till about three o'clock this afternoon but we've both got plans so we'll probably both be off late morning i'd imagine so yeah still several hours left still plenty of time for a bite the rods are still out there pretty I'm not gonna bother redoing them i'm just gonna leave them sitting sitting where they are they all went out really well yesterday so fingers crossed with this sort of overcast damp weather this morning they might still be in a chance of a bite or two but we'll wait and see right well that cruel mistress of time has come again uh, it's a session done and dusted, quick for eight hours, seemed to have flown by really. Um, only got the one fish between us, that was all. Shame really, I thought we could have been in for a, you know another fish this morning with the conditions being as they are, really overcast, light drizzle, but there you go, that's the way it goes. Yeah, pressure's quite high, but anyway, got to say, this is a beautiful little fishery. Three and a half acres, nine swims, you know, you're not casting long distances and stuff like I'm used to. It's, it's really a nice change. And the fishing here, absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's a shame we didn't get a chance to show you some more, really. Um, but I definitely recommend it, definitely recommend it. I think it's like £25 for 24 hours, which in this day and age, for three rods, you know, on a lake where you're fishing for, I think the lake record is £38. And there's about 13 or 14 30s in here. And bear in mind, they've only been open two years. They're really piling on the weight, and this is definitely going to be a, a really good fu uh, fishery in the future. I mean, it's a good fishery now, but we will definitely be back. Um, don't know when, uh, maybe try and get down in winter, maybe early spring perhaps, but we'll wait and see, fingers crossed. Anyway, that's all from us. Hope you enjoyed this short little video. It's been good one fish, but anyway, yeah, Darrow Farm Fisheries, just outside this. Well worth a look if you're in the area. Cracking little venue. Take care. Right, so that was Darrow Farm Fishery. Um, as I'm sure you can appreciate from the, the one fish that we did catch between us, that it was an absolutely beautiful fish and, you know, 
a couple of years time when it darkens up gets a bit more sort of older withered a bit of color to it you know that fish and all the fish in there are going to be absolutely banging not that they're not now but you know once they get a bit more mature they're going to look even better so definitely one for the future if you're from around the area and you fancy a little trip there definitely recommend it the swims are beautiful um toilet there and stuff on sites you know well looked after so yeah definitely definitely worth a trip so with that trip on my way home i actually received a phone call from a friend of mine who was fishing uh, down at the suffolk water park uh, a lake you if you've watched any of my videos previously you'll know well all about it's kind of the lake that i'm fishing pretty much most of my fishing at the moment is based on there um but he was actually fishing one of the match lakes out the back just a little socialism with his dad and his brother and said you know if you're not too far away do you fancy you know calling in and having a catch up so why not? I thought, went down there, spent a good couple of hours, we had a good couple of cups of tea and a good chat and, you know, watched him, his dad uh, and his brother fish. And it kind of almost flicked a little switch in me to make me think, why don't I spend more time doing just single day sessions, especially now that it's starting to get colder, on some smaller lakes such as the Match Lake, you know, why not? You know, there's fish there to be had. It's better than either A, not fishing at all, or B, spending days and nights behind motionless rods catching absolutely nothing. So with that in mind, I thought, you know what? I'm going to find a day in my diary where I have nothing planned, nothing going on, and I'm going to spend a day down at the Southwater Park, but on one of the match lakes. There's two there. You've got Match Lake 1 and Match Lake 2, but Match Lake 1's the bigger one, uh, and it's got a really, really good head of carp in there up to... I think they go up to low 20s, actually, if I remember rightly. Um, so that's kind of what I did. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I had a day off, and I thought, Do you know what? I want to practice my solid bag fishing. As many of you will know, solid bags, especially in the winter, can be absolutely devastating. And with winter coming up, I thought it would be a good chance to have a good practice on a small lake. I'm not going to be casting too far uh, and, you know, have a bit of time to do it. So I took my light old rods, two and three quarter pound test curves. You know, I didn't need any of the big heavy gear for this, two rods only. Uh, turned up down there, armed with, you know, some solid bags and spent the day uh, just, just, you know, basically fishing solid bags out towards the middle of the lake, 13 wraps, nice and close, nice, nice and gentle, nothing too exhilarating. Uh, and just kept topping up the spot every so often with a few pellets and a bit of hemp and corn. Obviously some match lakes, they do see that quite a lot. Uh, it's fair to say we had a really busy day. Um, I had 14 carp in the end throughout the course of the day. Um, I didn't actually do any filming while I was there because I didn't plan on really using it because generally they are they are quite small fish, a few scraper doubles, but mainly sort of high singles from sort of eight pounds to about 13, I reckon they were all caught. But what I will do now is I will just flick through for you a few photos that I did take of some of the fish, um, just so you can appreciate what they look like and well, basically what that lake has to hold. So, let's have a look at those now. So, there you go, from those fish, and I'm sure you can agree that they are some beautiful little fish that will, you know, potentially grow on to be bigger and better and maybe even find themselves in the big lake one day. So with that session out of the way, uh, the next thing I had booked in the calendar coming up about a couple of weeks later was the annual trip to France, the big one that you know we all look forward to. We spent years or a year or so, depending on how far in advance you booked it, dreaming about it, following the websites, you know, watching videos on YouTube and, and the like to try and you know hatch a plan ready for when we get there. Um, and for this year, I was going to Valley Lake. In northern France. Now I have been there twice before in the past. It was actually the first lake I ever went to in France about 15 years ago now with two of my friends and then I decided to go back there by myself uh, a year ago um, just for a midweek session by myself. Uh, pretty much the same time of year, second week of October I think it was. Um, done well on those four nights. Had, had eight fish up to 47 pound and one of the sturgeon as well. Uh, so yeah, so that was the next thing on the calendar. So I will leave you here and hand over to, well, me, <laughs> um, over in France for the week. Right, the time has come. Year and a half of planning, months and months of talking about it, hours of sleepless nights dreaming about it. It's France, 2022, Valley Lake, 
Let's do it. Right, well, we're finally on the train. Ah, oh, I'm so, so excited. I cannot, cannot put into words how excited I am. We all know what it's like if you've been to France before. You spend so, so long anticipating, uh, dreaming about this trip, as, you know, the thing you look forward to more than anything else that makes your year, you know, those hopes and dreams of trying to catch that PB or, you know, or, or whatever your goals are when you go out to France, so, uh, yeah, oh, I just, just want to hurry up and get there now, get off the train the other side, get to the lake, uh, and, and just get going now, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm really, really excited. If I'm honest, I'm not setting my expectations too high for this trip. I think if I'm, all, if I'm honest, I'll be really happy with a French £50 plus mirror. Had Commons 50 plus, but I've never had a 50 pound mirror. So that's all I'm hoping for, 50 pound mirror, and I will be absolutely over the moon. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll make it three out of three trips this late and I'll catch another one of the sturgeon. But we'll, we'll wait and see what happens on that one. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy the train ride, get off the other side, get to the lake, and I'll catch up with you in a little bit when we're there. Right, well we're here, we are all set up, we're in the swim. Um, got here, bang on the gate being unlocked, half past 10 this morning, couldn't have timed any better. I was the first one at the gate, um, so that's quite good actually. I managed, I managed to sort of manage to call and mark the owner for a little bit longer before everybody else turned up. Let's have a good chat with him and see see what, see what's what been going on. Um, he reckons there's probably about 40 fish came out uh, last week. Um, I think he might, he's possibly put a kiss of death on me saying the person that was in my swim, swim four, um, had a 58, a 58, a 52, and an upper uh, upper 40 as well. So he may have put the kiss of death on me there. He don't, I don't know, we'll wait and see. Um, but anyway, yeah, so it was good. Had a good chat with him. Uh, obviously a few fish been coming out. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of got the, got the gear around here. Slowly got set up, I haven't bothered rushing, what's the time now? It's, it's only quarter to three in the afternoon. Um, but yeah, I've done all my, done all my markering up and, and casting about. Um, one thing I do find, personally, personal preference, when I come to a holiday venue like this, where I can't move, I am gonna be in the swim all week, whether I like it or not, um, I like to spend the time on the first day really mapping out the swim, get that marker rod out, or bare lead, whatever you're gonna do, um, or if you're using a bait boat with the um, echo sound and stuff on it, however you choose to do it, get it out there, get it done. Cause a disturbance in the first day, write everything down, get a clear picture of what you've got in front of you, and then you know what you're working with throughout the week. Um, again, personal preference, that's just what I tend to do. So um, that is what I've done today. Um, had a good cast around the marker rod, probably about an hour and a half I spent really, whilst everybody else was still getting their gear to the swim, to be honest, a few people were a bit on the drag getting here, so done me a favour. Uh, I have seen one fish show close in, which obviously is going to get a rod on it straight away, so that one's going to be the first rod to go out. Um, going to try, I'm sort of going to hedge my bets a little bit to start off with. i um, going to use three different tactics. Um, going to use my old faithful snowman rig on one because I fished this lake two years ago and six of the eight fish that I caught that week were all on the same snowman presentation. So I'm definitely gonna put one rod on that. Uh, one rod is gonna be just on a wafter, um, and the third rod is gonna be pure particle. Um, haven't quite my mind, made my mind up yet whether well, I'm gonna fish um, some some s slow sink and fake maize, or I might put some foam with some real maize and pop it up, um, or I might fish two tiger nuts, um, and drill them out with a bit of cork in the middle. Have really haven't decided with that rod yet. So the other two rods are going to go out now. Going to get them done, uh, and then I'm going to have a good think about what I'm going to do with the with the other rod on the particle. So yeah, we'll wait and see. But that's the tactic for tonight. I'm not going to put a lot of bait out. I don't know how much was chucked in here yesterday or last week, so I don't really know what I'm fishing over the top of. So for now, it's going to be just a softly, softly approach for the first night, and just see if we can nick one. Really, try and you know answer for those questions, a rig that works, a bait that works, a spot that works. So that's how I'm working. Um, got my mate Phil in the swim next door. So obviously between the two of us, we'll kind of be fishing, almost fishing as a team really. Um, I'm sure he'll be 
but I know he'll be fishing different hook baits to me, different methods and stuff. So we'll wait and see whoever starts picking up fish first, um, and we start re sort of unlocking that code as to what's going to work. Um, then we'll probably, you know, maybe switch all rods onto that. But we'll wait and see how it goes. Seven days, a long time. Early, early days yet, but fingers crossed. We can get the rods out now. And hopefully, I'll see you sometime this evening or throughout the night or tomorrow morning with fish. Let's see what we can do. Right, so little update. We are now 24 hours in um, and literally nothing to report. Uh, really quiet night for, for both of us. Uh, had a couple little bleeps here and there, but uh, but that was it so nothing nothing to rub home really so we don't know what's working and what's not working at the moment so just going to, have to keep persisting and uh keep keep pushing for it um nobody caught a fish last night there was only one run from one of the guys in one of the lodges but he uh snapped off apparently so um yeah one run out of uh 10 anglers or fishing three rods each you know you do the math that's not not a lot but that's often the way with with the first night the first night's always the hardest night um there's a lot of banging and crashing when everybody gets here sets up spotting out casting leads out and shouting and people you know getting all excited about being here so anyway yeah but it's all good sun's shining so it's nice and warm during the day sort of 18 19 degrees dropping to about sort of three four in the evening uh, and throughout the night so yeah lovely nice conditions really a bit sunny at the minute but once that dies down the next couple of hours uh, there's definitely a chance i think weather wise for a bite or two so yeah rods are back out again same spots same hook baits and we'll see what happens we'll just go from there Well, good morning. Uh, we're now in the morning of uh, the fifth day. We've just done four nights. Um, really, really cold and extremely quiet. Um, I ain't got clever anybody else had anything. I haven't heard nothing. Uh, I absolutely cannot see anything at all. It's, believe it or not, nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see behind me, but <laughs> the... Uh, The lake is uh, extremely foggy, so I can't. I literally cannot see the far bank. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've no idea whether anybody else has caught anything. But oh well, we'll keep on plugging away. Maybe today will be the day that something changes. Let's uh, let's keep hoping and uh, just keep uh, pushing on and uh, hope we can make something happen. Right, well, we're down to the last night now. Um, it's middle of the day now on Thursday. Go home tomorrow morning. Again, nothing to report last night. So, so quiet. Um, still only the three fish all week. Um, and they came three days ago. So no one's, no one's caught more than one fish out of the three people that have caught. And there's not been a single fish out for three days now. Um, apparently V2's fishing just as bad at the other lake um don't really know why to be honest with you um before we thought it was down to the high high temperature during the day and really really low at night but last night was completely different that was lovely and warm last night really um different story today though been on and off raining all day we're now mid-afternoon my rods are already out ready for the night now um we'll see um uh, much more what we you know what you call carpy conditions um overcast rain pressures air pressure isn't too bad um but yeah we'll wait and see it's gonna be another mild night again tonight so we'll just uh we'll just see what happens really um i'll change tactics a little bit today i've stopped fishing all the high vs i've stopped fishing with me mk2s and me uh strawberry field uh pop-ups with with snowman on the one rod and i've just gone from match to hatch uh, wafter on one rod um, match hatch snowman on another and a uh, still sticking with the two bits of maize on on the particle rod but like I say nothing's worked so it's, you know we can't differentiate what is and isn't the key at the minute um, everybody else has all been using high vis pop-ups and stuff again and not been catching neither so yeah we'll uh, try and change it for this last night and see if it maybe brings us some luck and maybe see if we can pull one out of the bag but uh, yeah, a little bit despondent, but there you go. You keep plugging along. That's fishing at the end of the day. It's, you know, it's possible fishing, not catching. So, yep, 
Rods are out. See what happens tonight, I suppose. I'll catch you in the morning. Well, would you believe it? It's uh, half seven in the morning. Everything's packed away bar the rods <laughs> and the middle rod has <laughs> absolutely torn off. And this fat, dumpy, 25 pound, one ounce mirror is the result of it. Okay. 25 pound and one ounce beautiful mirror from down Valley Lake in France oh oh my god oh the relief it's been a long seven days and a long seven nights and I lay there last night and I heard so many fish crash and roll and woke up this morning at six o'clock when the alarm went off her fish crash and roll and I stood here while I was packing my gear away and I thought one's just, I'm sure one's just rolled right near my middle rod, it's only 12 wraps out. Lo and behold, within 15 minutes, absolute one toner, off she went and there she is. <sighs> Taken on the uh, apex wafter over, literally just a handful of bait and uh, a little bit of crumb. Got there in the end, happy days. Right, well, we're now on the train home. It's just started moving. I don't know if you can see it or not through the window there, it's a bit bright. Um, safe to say, it's a really tough week, really tough week. Uh, probably one of the hardest weeks I've ever had in France, to be honest with you. Um, but that's the way it goes. You know, you can't control the weather, you can't control whether the fish are going to feed or not. So I don't think we've done anything particularly wrong. Um, you know, given the fact that nobody else was catching hardly any, same as us, and the majority of people didn't catch a single thing, so uh, I don't think we've done anything wrong, really. Um, but still, no checkbook and pen for me. Uh, that crack and 25 pounders saved the day for me, really. Um, I was packing up. Photos were recording a bit rushed because everything was all packed away, and I was in a bit of a panic and everything. Um, so, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, well, they should, hopefully they'll come out all right. So, another trip done. We want to see what happens next year we've already booked to go back to valley again do love that lake it's a beautiful lake cracking facilities so if you are in the market to go to france i do definitely recommend it they've got v1 and v2 it's two different lakes um, we went on v1 smaller of the two only 10 swims uh 15 acres and some fish up to 70 pounds so yeah that's it from me on this trip stay safe if you do go to france and uh yeah tight lines wish you all the best right well Sadly, you know, not the week that I dreamed of, not very prolific at all. Um, I think that there wasn't many fish caught the whole entire week. It was really, really difficult going. But you've got to be in it to win it. You know, France is no different to England. There's no guarantee you're always going to catch. And let's face it, lakes in France, they're possibly more pressured than a lot of the lakes are over in England. You know, 10 months of the year, there is 10 anglers on there, three rods each, fishing constantly. You know, the fish see a lot of pressure, so they can be hard to catch. Uh, I must just uh, say at this moment in time, a quick, um, almost apology, I suppose, is probably the best way to describe it, and uh, some advice for, for you guys that have watched this video. Um, I made a bit, quite a big mistake when I landed that fish, um, and so I need to hold my hands up now and apologise. Um, in the heat of the moment, I kind of got caught up in, in catching the fish. All my gear was packed away. Uh, and actually what I should have done was I should have photographed and filmed that fish in the water. When I went there the year before, the rules were 30 pound or above, all had to be photographed in the water. But this year, the rules have changed and it's any fish you catch on Valley Lake One must be photographed in the water. Obviously I didn't, so Apologies, please learn from my mistake. Um, you know, the only thing I can say is I was so caught up in the moment. I was debating, do I film it, don't I film it, do I photograph it, don't I photograph it. Like I say all the gear was in the back of the swim. I had half an hour till I was being picked up by the quad bike. My friend had already gone home a day early, so he couldn't film it for me. Uh, it was just all a bit of a rush. Um, so again, apologies. Please don't do it if you do go there. Um, but thankfully, as I'm sure you can see from the video, the fish behaved itself and I would like to think I am an experienced angler and, and, and know what I'm doing um, so the fish come to no harm. But 
please don't do it, please learn from my mistake. So, following on from that, uh, the next session I had booked in was uh, probably another couple of weeks later, I find myself with 48 hours uh, to spare, so I went back down to the Suffolk Water Park um, to try my luck down there and to see if I could sort of make amends for the lack of action that I had in France, kind of lick my wounds a little bit and see if I could get a bend or two in the rod. Right, well, here we are again, uh, back on the regular stomping ground, uh, back down at Suffolk Water Park. Uh, we've got a couple of days ahead of us, um, not that far long since. Got back from France, um, need a bit of redemption really, it weren't the, the best trip in the world, but that's the way it goes sometimes. You win some, you lose some. Glad I've managed pulling out the bag at the end, so, you know, better than a checkbook and pen. So yeah, anyway, we're back down here, middle of November now, so autumn's, well, almost almost gone now. Um, it'll be December and winter before we know it. Um, got a couple of days ahead of me. Um, I'm back up in the point swim, peg 12. Um, reason being, uh, pretty much two reasons really. One, the whole back arm down to my left is completely full. It's been pre-booked for, for weeks, so I can't get down there. Um, I don't really fancy the chalet bay behind me because I think it's just gonna be too cold for down there now. Uh, and the car park swims up the top are all taken, so this gives me a good good bit of open water, lots of options. I know I can catch fish for me. I've had a few, obviously, if you've seen any of my previous videos earlier this year, we've had, we've had a few out of this swim. So yeah, confident really. Um, big, strong 35 mile an hour south southwesterly winds, which isn't great for this swim because that's literally right in my face. Um, and we have had quite a lot of rain this morning, so it's now late afternoon, the rods are out, and it's the first chance I've had to try and do a bit of recording because it's just been, the, the weather's just been too much really. Um, but yeah, anyway, rods are out. Uh, two rods straight out, open op out in open water as usual. Uh, left hand rod over on near the reed line. Um, Two rods for fishing with uh, match a hatch snowmen. Again, if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that's my favourite approach. Um, it's just something I have real, real confidence in. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, and the other one is a uh, 20 mil apex bottom bait, 15 mil uh, strawberry fields white pop up snowman. Again, um, caught a lot of fish on those two presentations out of here over the last couple of years. So I'm not going to change it. Um, Again, just fish a mixture of apex, different sizes over the top of them. Um, not gone too heavy just yet. We'll see how it happens, and uh, I'll have to soon add more if I need to. So, yeah, I'm gonna sit back, relax, and uh, see what tonight brings. Catch you in a bit. Right, we're back here on home soil, back at Suffolk Water Park. Um, we're midway through November now, so autumn well and truly is upon us. Um, First night, bit of success. First night this morning, right hand rods, left hand rod even, it's pulled up tight, fish on the margin. Um, been rewarded with a beautiful little 24 pound, four pound, uh, 24 pound, four ounce even. Coming, it starts behaving, I'll uh, get her up and show you. There she is, 24 pound, four ounce. Beautiful fish, cracking condition. Obviously getting his head down on those boilies. I'll we'll put on a bit of weight ready for winter, which ain't gonna be too far away from us now, but there we go. Beautiful fish to start the session off with. We've still got another couple of nights to go. Lovely old job. Right, so little update for you. We're now mid-afternoon. Um, it's a bit windy. <laughs> to say the least, um, 35 mile an hour winds smashing pretty much into my face or slightly to my right. So, apart from that, what do we know? Uh, not a lot, in all honesty. Um, I did toy with the idea of moving earlier um, for this last night down to the, down the side arm, down to my left, into the deeper water where this wind is absolutely pumping down there. But it's stitched up down there. There's, there's pretty much every single swim is taken. So I'm not going to bother going down there and just trying to fit in and amongst people. I'm just not worth the time. Um, probably hear the alarm beep in there just to, just the wind gets up and it's just absolutely savage big bows in the lines is i mean one of my rods i'm fishing at 25 wraps but even just to hit that i've had to put my waders on and wade out about four wraps into the water almost up to hip height just to be able to hit the same spot clipping up at 20 wraps and wading out than what i would at 25 because this, this wind is absolutely savage but there you go what can we do about it? It's, you know, we're here, that's the weather. Um, but we're fishing anyway, the rods are out. On the spots, I'm happy with them, got a bit of bait over them. Uh, and we'll see what this last night brings. But for now, I'm just gonna 
hide away from this wind in the bivy. Um, keep watching the water and uh, see if I can see anything. So, fingers crossed for something this afternoon, this evening, or even throughout the night. So, hopefully, I'll see you in a little while. Right, well, it's uh, about eight o'clock in the morning now. Um, nothing to report last night, unfortunately. Uh, not a single run or anything, a few bleeps, but the wind was absolutely horrendous again last night. It's calmed down a bit this morning, but I haven't seen nothing since I've been up. I've been up since about half past six this morning, but it was still pitch black. Um, but yeah, unfortunately the cruel mistress that is time is uh, upon us once again, and it's uh, time to get packed away and start planning for the next one really um not really sure what's not happened this session to be honest um nobody else has caught anything i think i might have been the only person that's caught a fish over the past 48 hours with that one yesterday morning so we'll take that um better than a blankety blank checkbook and pen in it but yeah don't know really one of them um did see a few fish last night in the area so uh, not too sure what's going on on paper you know conditions are perfect nice low pressure wind south southwesterly nice warm wind um bit of rain here and there but it's not been the one but there you go one fish better than none um we go away we rethink and we'll come back again hopefully in a couple of weeks time for another 24 48 hour session and see what happens from there but oh well here's what it is see you next time right so yeah again not a very prolific session but again a fish in the bank so you know it's always nice to catch any catch is better than blank and so i'm always happy when i'm catching so the next session uh, again was back to a day session uh, again i was going to go pretty much the anticipation was to kind of emulate what i'd done on match lake one down at the Suffolk water park uh, a month earlier uh, on the solid bags nice light rods good bit of fun but this time i'd actually take the camera with me and and maybe do a bit of filming got down to the lake had a good chat to uh, nick the head bailiff uh he is always full of advice and pretty much he said to me oh, don't bother with m1 uh, hasn't fished very well over the weekend at all there weren't very many fish caught out of it neither had the big lake uh, so i ended up finding myself on the traditional lake uh, and this is one of the absolute beauties of somewhere like the Suffolk Water Park, a bit like Linear and places like that where there's more than one lake to go at because if one lake isn't fishing well you can just go on to a different one. So there's always options open to you yeah, depending on the time of year, the situation and everything like that. So there's always fishing to be had. Um, so yeah, off I went to the traditional lake for just a day session. See how we got on. Right, well, welcome once again. We are back on the bank um, just for a day session this time. Um, haven't got enough time to be out for, for longer than that, unfortunately. Just got too much on with work and stuff at the moment. But, you know, got to make the most of these little windows of opportunity. And once again, we are down at the Suffolk Water Park. Now, we're not on the big lake, like I normally am. Um, we're actually over one of the, the smaller lakes at the back called the traditional lake. Now, one of the great things about having a complex of lakes such as the Suffolk Water Park uh, within accessible distance, even for today, just for a day session, is it gives you a variety of options to choose from. Now, you've got the big lake, which has obviously got the, the big fish in it. It's also obviously the hardest lake on the complex. Um, we then also got two match lakes out the back. Um, obviously, I've done a little bit of fishing on match lake one uh, a couple of months ago, just for a bit of fun. Um, and then you've also got this one here, the traditional lake, all off are something different. And basically, the traditional lake is just a smaller version of the big lake, in my opinion. Um, it's got some really, really beautiful carp in there, and they're up to about 30 pounds. You know, some good fish in here, um, and there's, there's plenty of them, you know. So, you know, there's numbers to go for and it generally fishes well pretty much all year round. Now, we're actually at the end of November. Um, it's a beautiful, autonomous morning. Um, it's only just got light enough really for me to start filming. Um, got here at first gate, seven o'clock. Um, got the rods out within 20 minutes, just, just fishing out. 11 rod lengths, tight to an island to my left. Um, had a fish show right round to my left where I can't actually get to, but that was probably more than two rod lengths from the bank. So the fish are obviously moving around. Um, Already had a bream, <laughs> um, obviously not what we're after, but you know, that's just one of the one of the things that happens, especially with it being a, a lake such as this, where there is a big head of, you know, roach, tench, 
perch, everything. Every single fish you can imagine is here. Hence the reason why it's called tra traditional lake. It's got a bit of everything in there. Um, obviously we're here for the carp. Um, not doing anything too outside of the box to, for today. Um, back on the solid bags like I did on match lake one. Um, just varying the colours of the pop-ups. I've got some whites, I've got some pinks, I've got some yellows. Um, and we're just going to keep chucking them around and see what happens really. Um, I've got a little bit of particle that I might put out. But for the first couple of hours I'm just going to put these two bags out. And uh, just see what happens really. Like I say, I've already had one bream. So there's something feeding on the spot. Um, and we'll just, we'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. Um, if I'm not feeding it later in the day I can still pack up and move and go over to match like one possibly if I want to. But I think I'll probably stay here. Um, spoke to the bailiff this morning and he said that the traditional lake has been fishing better than any of the other lakes over the weekend. So this is definitely a good place to start. Um, yeah, we're only here for the day so where was looking decent so I'm going to kick back, enjoy a nice cup of tea and let's see if we can get in amongst a few. Okay, so I thought I'd just take a few seconds just to quickly show you my, my little solid bag presentation that I'm doing. Um, decent size lead, three ounce. Um, I don't see the need in going really small, really light. I think you still need to have the weight there to hook the fish. Um, little kicker down the bottom here, just to, just to help stop the, the, the uncoated braid looping up over the, the lead or anything while it's inside of the bag. Um, short total about three inches uncoated braid that's actually fox camatex with the coated braid completely stripped off uh bb shot just there just above the hook and a nice big size six hexcape hook from hobo armor um little sh bit of shrink tube and kicker there and then a 12 mil tropical essence pop-up from impulse baits and that'll just sit up so just 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 like that once the bag disperses nice and simple strong gear um, i'm fishing tight to an island and i don't want to lose anything so yeah solid gear nice and strong and that is what has produced me fish albeit three breams so far today in the first hour and a half but there you go a fish is a fish hopefully the carp will push the bream out and we'll get amongst them in a little while right well we're up and running with the carp we've had what four four or five bream now it's now about half past ten in the morning I've only been fishing a couple of hours um i was literally sitting there just finishing a cup of tea thinking to myself is it worth putting a couple of a couple of spoms of of uh, of hemp and sweet corn out just to see if i can get them feeding on something and the left hand rods pulled up tight and we're in um nothing massive beautiful little common i mean lifting up for this full of beans still Come here, come on, I'll show you to the people. <laughs> so lively, these tiny little little commons, full of beans. Look at him! Oh, there he is. Beautiful little common, real, oh, oh, lively, real dark golden colours, ready for winter fighting like an absolute demon putting a right little scrap underneath my rod tip this one did okay don't know how big he is i'm not gonna bother weighing him probably about eight pound maybe eight nine pound at the most i reckon but yeah we're off to a good start um yeah like i say left hand rod which is the first take i've had off the left all the others have come off the right off the tropical essence um yeah plan is working like i say it's still nice and early so hopefully we can get a few more happy days Right, well, the sun is disappearing pretty quickly now. It's nearly four o'clock. Um, I think it actually looks at, looking at the screen in front of me, actually looks from there as if it's actually a lot lighter than what it is, but it's not. The, the light is rapidly disappearing, so I'm gonna, gonna start packing away. I haven't had anything more, uh, no more bream, nothing. Um, not really seen a lot neither, to be fair. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a quiet afternoon, but that's the way it goes isn't it you know we've, we've managed to have a have a one little carp and a few breams so not a waste of day so on that note 
gonna bring this video to an end. Um, probably won't be back out in the bank doing any filming between now and the new year. So thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope this year has been good to you and if not, I hope next year is even better. Until next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.